Hi everybody, this is Susan with Susan Monroe Art, and today I am going to be doing a portrait of Wednesday Adams from that old TV show, The Adams Family, along with her sidekick, her, her side appendage, whatever you want to call her, uh, thing. Netflix has released a new series featuring Wednesday, and it's so cute, and it stars um, just the adorable Jenna Ortega, and I thought it'd be really fun to do a fan art picture of it. So to start, I found a picture of Wednesday online, one that I liked, and I carefully drew it out in my sketchbook, and now I'm just putting a very light layer of yellow ochre and uh, alizarin crimson uh, skin color just to start as the base for her face. So speeding this up just a little bit. So her left or right hand side of her face was really in shadow. So I start just gently putting this in while the paint is wet so I get some really blended edges using a little alizarin crimson and some cerulean blue. There are a lot of cool shadows on that side of her face, so I use a lot of blues. I also use some warmer colors too, just for the contrast. And on the left, that's a little opera rose I'm putting in there because that side of the face was warmer. Now filling in the neck, and while I have that uh, flesh tone, I went ahead and filled in Thing, sitting on her shoulder, her sidekick. And then I decided to go really bold with my shadows to start with. This is alizarin crimson and a little bit of burnt sienna, making this dark shadow that's uh, in the socket of this eye and on the side of her nose, along with a little opera rose at that transition point, and again, cerulean blue. Like I said, there's a lot of blue in the shadows here. I'm just trying to get the shape of that nose. I was looking really carefully at my reference photo to get that down and then get the edges of the nose and the shapes around the nose and the mouth. Again, this is the yellow ochre alizarin crimson mixture that I really dropped in there to show um, that shadow. And then just pure cerulean blue on the far right where there's a very cool reflected light. And then working around the shadows of her chin. You can see it's like she has a light shining on one side and the other side is very much in shadow. And reinforcing the shading under her bangs. And then on to the other side of the face where that eye also, of course, has shadow in the eye socket and color leading down uh, to the side of the cheekbone. Between the cheekbone and the nose is generally a little path of color that goes down to the side of the nose and the mouth. And this part of your face is called the philtrum. That little divot under your nose was very red. And again, really reinforcing those shapes around her nose. And I have to darken around her eye. Again, I keep having to go in and darken it, darken it, darken it several times. Here's the permanent magenta, and I used ultramarine blue mixed together to really give the dark shadow that's on that side of her eye. And I was just using the colors in my reference photo as a map. I'm sorry if you can hear a lot of background no noise right now. Someone's running a vacuum cleaner in my house. But we'll go on. I really wanted to make sure I got the darks dark enough and really kept the lights light enough because I think that contrast is really what makes a portrait or any painting really pop. I think that just really looks good. And it's a common mistake I see in beginner art. People are afraid to really go dark. Don't be afraid of the dark. Go ahead and, and, and give it a try. Pop it in. And once again, going in and reinforcing. I wait for that first layer of paint to dry. Go in and darken it some more. And I do that very gently because if you scrub hard with your brush, you're gonna lift that first layer of paint and end up with a white area. I, I end up doing that a little later. I'll point it out to you. Now for the lips which are alizarin crimson and opera rose mixed. If you like what you're seeing here, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. 
And if you have any ideas of other people I could do portraits of, characters, or movies or TV, please let me know in the comments. There, I just did some shading in the whites of the eyes. The whites of people's eyes are not white. Hers were very light blue. And here I'm reinforcing that sh shadow in the corner of the mouth that I think is really important. Once again, going in with that permanent magenta and ultramarine blue mix. And you can see sort of in the corner of her eye there, I end up lifting the paint and it makes a little white area where I scrubbed a little too hard. I'll come back in and fix that that later, but see, I'm trying to dot some paint in there to make that fill back in. And then really developing the darks around her nose. As I said, going dark enough is important. Now doing, showing the thickness and the bottom lid of the eye is also really important. If you can see, I have one line of paint right along the white of the eye and then another darker line underneath that shows that there is thickness to the lid. If you don't add that, your eyes won't look realistic. Now carefully following the wrinkles and ridges in her lips. I'm using that same color of Opera Rose and Alizarin Crimson. Just a little stronger to do that. And finally, we get to the eyes. I decided to add brown first, even though her eyes are really black in this picture, just to give it a little depth, I think. Uh, this uh, this is uh, sepia, sepia with a little bit of um, Payne's Gray makes a nice warm black. And I'm adding pretty much direct Payne's Gray around her eyes as well. She had some beautiful dark lashes and a lot of darkness in that area around her eyes, the shadows around her eyes. And carefully painting in where her eyelids are as well. I needed to go even darker with the lip shadows. And making the nostrils pretty strong and dark. And now the real dark of her eyes. Her eyes were so dark, I didn't even have to, have to add the pupil. You couldn't even see the pupil in her eyes. They were so dark. Carefully adding the lashes. The top row, of course, is longer, and the bottom row doesn't come right down from the edge of the eye. It comes from that lower part of the lid, which shows the thickness of the eye. And once again, adding some shadow to the eyes, because your eyes, if you think about them, are spheres. And just like any sphere, it's gonna have that same uh, Shadow on one side and light on the other where the light is hitting it. And her little tear ducts in there. And now some shading in the neck. You can see she's really starting to take shape now. This was really exciting, this part for me. I like it when you get the basic shading in and then you can really start adding the detail in. At this point, I know I probably haven't totally screwed up and I'm gonna be able to make a success of the painting. And now it's finally time to start on her hair. I used pure Payne's Gray, which is a very, very cool, dark, cool blue-black because uh, her hair had a very cool tint to it. Um, and that's exactly what I wanted. If I'd warmed it up, I would have added a little burnt sienna to it. Of course, don't forget the eyebrows. I put those in there. And I just left parts where the highlights were white. And uh, of course there were a lot of highlights in these braids. I also knew I could go back in later with uh, a little cerulean blue and add a little color to those highlights and lift some of that paint to make them blend in a little more. And now my favorite thing to do in the painting, add the highlights to the eyes. I look carefully at the highlights. There's a dot highlight and then a slight 
curve that showed the curve of her eyeball. So I added both of those. And then on the other eye, I just think these highlights just make your portrait come to life. I'm putting them in with my gel pen. Okay, so this is day two of painting Wednesday and I started with Thing, her friend who's a hand sitting on her shoulder. Thing uh, had some cooler tones to him, her, him. And um, I really followed the same methodology as I used for Wednesday and just carefully copying the shades that I saw in the photo and really trying to match the darkness. Um, so I would have that nice contrast between light and dark. Um, it wasn't as fun to do as Wednesday's face. Hands can be a little tricky sometimes, but I thought it turned out well. Definitely more shadow, especially down on the fingers. But um, I'll just go through this really quickly and you can just see how it turned out. Once thing was completed, I decided to go in and add some cerulean blue to the highlights in her hair. Black hair frequently has a blue highlight. And so I went in with my brush and just was lifting and blending color. It was really easy to do. The Strathmore paper made it, made it really fun. So you can see I'm just going in there, going over the highlights and blending the blue in with the black. And then it was onto her clothing. I kept with the same blue tones that I had used in the highlights in her hair, cerulean blue, and a little ultramarine, uh, French ultramarine blue, putting in the shadows in her collar, and then working the shadows in her blouse. I really love doing shadows like this. I used the wet uh, brush wet with clean water to blend the shadows in and make them look nice and soft rather than working wet on wet because I like having a little more control. Doing a couple touch-ups on thing and now on to her tie and the tie the blue of the tie really blended in with the darkness under the collar so I tried to make that happen and once I had done with this once I was done with this part of the tie I realized it really needed to go a lot darker so I went back in and and really darken it up to almost a black. And finally, her, her coat, her jacket that she wears to school, her little uniform jacket. Again, the same colors of blue, um, a lot of French ultramarine in this. And true, true confessions, my camera battery died before I was able to do the sweater and the straps of her backpack that like you, you can see on her shoulders. So this will cut a little short but hopefully um, this painting has given you some fun tips on how to paint skin tones. It's helped you see my process for painting a portrait. And it's just been super fun to paint such a fun character. And I would encourage you to have some fun with your portrait painting. Find a character you like, some uh, picture of someone from a movie, a character in a book, whatever, that makes you excited to do the work and excited to try painting it. And finally, I'm going in and adding the stripes here on the lapels of her jacket. I really just use clear water to lift the paint rather than making a, a sharp stripe on there. I like the soft edge a little better. Uh, and then on to the other side to do the matching matching lapel. Again, I apologize that it the, the video ends a little before I did her sweater and the straps, but I, I think you've got an idea of how this worked. So if you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. I also encourage you to please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me to make other videos and encourages me. And if you can think of a character you'd like to see me do, please let me know. Thanks for watching.